Hello everyone, this is Mark, I'm back with a new tutorial. You remember last time, uh, at the end of the fourth session, in our tutorial, this is where we, uh, where we closed uh, the project, we had a sample project, and we have set it up to display a message from the database. And you can, you can find this, the exact same code, on GitHub, so you can uh, clone it and, um, and start working on that. The GitHub project, the sample project on GitHub is our starting point for this tutorial. So what we're going to do today, I think it's time that we add some more uh, real life like functionality to our project. So I want to make it look nicer, give it a professional look and feel with Bootstrap. And the Bootstrap is a framework, if you don't know that, it's a front end framework of HTML, CSS and JavaScript components. So um, I have used many frameworks and I at least tried uh, a couple of them and used a couple of them more extensively and finally I decided to stick to Bootstrap and it's very popular, I think it's the most popular anyway today. So I want to add that to our project and uh, we will create a login form where we can authenticate users. So this is the component that I want to add today and um, okay let's get started. So as a first thing I want to have a look at bootstrap and show you what we are about to do so this is the bootstrap website on the getbootstrap.com you can have a look at it and uh, in the menu there's a getting started tab uh, we will work on that i will show some some examples on it uh, it has css components you can have a look it contains a grid system which is a layout grid for websites it has typography tables forms button all different kind of building blocks for websites. So this is not a functionality on the back end. It's more like building blocks for your front end. And it helps you a lot with uh, wireframing. And it even also helps you a lot if you want to do some in-house development that doesn't need to shine so much, but needs a professional look and feel. And of course you can customize it for your needs. So you can use it for real professional work. And um, on the component side, you have more icons, drop downs, navigation bars, and so on. So the website works in a way that you have some example, a sample. So this is, for example, a part where you have the icons here, and then you have some drop downs, for example. So the drop down, this is the example and you have the code underneath the examples. The entire site is structured like this and we will add a signing page to our site. And um, Bootstrap is giving off a couple of good examples. So this is an example of certain components put together to create a new layout. You can have it have a look at the blog for example. So this is a blog sample this is how bootstrap block, block site would look like and this is a dashboard uh, we are using it in our in-house ventures and uh, next to the dashboard here we have the signing page and this is the signing page that I want to add to the sample project and then build the functionality behind this to authenticate a user so how can we add Bootstrap to our project? We have, uh, we have options to download the Bootstrap JavaScript and CSS files because all you need to add is JavaScript and CSS. So if you're if you on the Getting Started page here and you just scroll, scroll down a little bit, this is my preferred way. I add it over the CDN, which is a content delivery network online. It's in the cloud. Mean That means you don't need to download this to your computer. You can include that from the internet. So we're going to include the CSS in the head of our page. And we're going to include the JavaScript just before the closing body tag. And uh, I think the JavaScript is not required for the signing page itself, but for the entire project it will it will be okay. So one day later on, we're going to add that. I think for today, we're just going to use the CSS. Plus, for the signing page specifically, we will need uh, a dedicated CSS that is in the example here. So I think it's time to get started. And um, 
it's time to think about the functionality that we want to add and create some new files in, in our structure. So in terms of projects, uh, I hope you have the sample project open or at least you are familiar with the sample project. I have it open here. Plus I'm running a MySQL server here. And next to the MySQL server, I'm also running a PHP server in this project. In the previous tutorials, I've already explained how I do that, but this is how I do it. I just uh, go PHP minus S capital S and localhost in the project folder and that starts up the server. So I can even show it to you. You hit enter and the server is running. So if you come back to your local host, it's the same address, then the server is still running. So simple. All right. So let's think about it for a minute. We have this page here and what we need, we will have to have a similar page in our project. So we need to add an HTML. We need to have a controller for this HTML and this is user functionality. So I will create a user controller. Plus we will need to have another model for the user object. We need to, we need to store the user information somewhere. And uh, my idea is to store it in the database, in the MySQL database. Plus we will need to have a CSS file in our project for the sign-in specific functionality. So the sign-in CSS, the sign-in look and feel. So let's go and create these new files in our structure. So you remember that under the app, we store all the functionality under the app folder. So in the views, let's create another empty file and let's call it login HTM. This is going to be our login file. In the models, let's go and touch a user PHP. This is going to be the user database object mapper. In the controllers, let's touch another file called usercontroller.php. All right. So the empty structure, the skeleton is there. And uh, all we need to do is add another folder for the, for the static files, for the CSS and JavaScript. And uh, my idea is I prefer to do it in a way that I just create the folders under the app folder. So like MK there CSS. Because if you don't have too many static files, it's, it's okay to do it this way. It's not going to be too much. It's going to be CSS. And later on, maybe there's going to be a JavaScript folder here. And if you need images, then you may have another folder called images. And I'm completely happy with that. Alternatively, you could, you could add a folder called static and put CSS, JavaScript, and an image file under static folder. But I just put, give a CSS folder here and inside this folder, I will create sign in CSS. Now we have a lot of empty files and it's time that we fill in those empty files. So uh, let's come to the views and first let's go to login HTML. And the best way I found to add the sign in page to our HTML is that we just gonna copy the HTML from here. This is the bootstrap example. So from the bootstrap example, we will copy and paste the HTML into our own example. Please note that today I'm not going to create a template hierarchy because uh, I think it's for another tutorial. It would be just too much. But right now we have two different HTML files. You know, this is the one that displays the message that we, we have here, this message. And later on, it's a good idea to have an overall layout, especially if you have navigation and menus and so on. But that's for another tutorial. So today we keep these two HTML files separate and we don't provide a template hierarchy. All right, so let's go back to the sample page by Bootstrap. And um, what I'm using here, you saw that I did right click and inspect element. This feature is a developer feature in Safari. You have the same thing in, in Chrome and, and, and Firefox as well. So it's pretty common. You have access to it in your own browser. And if you explore the resources in the example, you will see a sign in CSS. And this CSS contains 
the specific layout. If you look at it, it's pretty short. So this is the body tag and this is the form tag. And you see, I scroll just a little bit and it's already over. So it's not the entire CSS of Bootstrap. This is just specific to these components on the sign-in page. So I go and take this and copy this in our new CSS file. Okay, so now that we are ready with this, let's go back to the HTML and have a look at it and see what's in there. So first we have some generic meta information, which is okay. We have some more meta information. We have a, we have a fab icon. I don't care about this. This doesn't exist right now, but I leave it like this. A title, we can customize that to say that this is F3 sample project login page. Okay, and then this line includes the bootstrap CSS. And that means that as I've shown you here on the bootstrap site, that bootstrap is included with, there are a couple of alternatives, but bootstrap must be included in order to make the functionality available in your project. You could download the source code as well. You can download whatever you like, but I prefer to use this minified CSS from the CDN. So what we're going to do, you see, this is a local relative path on the server, and we don't have this path here on our, our server, but instead of this path, we will use the CDN version. We need to have a sign in CSS. And in our case, it has a different path because we created it on a different path. So we just go app slash CSS forward slash sign in CSS. And this is exactly this file. And under that, there is something for debugging purposes. And uh, actually, this is something for Internet Explorer. I have never used it because I'm using this for an internal backend and we, we don't use Internet Explorer. So I just remove it. If you want to test with Internet Explorer, I would suggest to make some some or a lot of research on this and 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 you know dive deep into that topic. Okay, so now we have these things here. The next part is the body, and we will work on the body later on. So let's go come back to this later. We have some more for Internet Explorer, let's just remove it for now. This is the closing body tag. This is the closing HTML tag. And what you see here, this is another span. And this is not part of the bootstrap sample. This is part of the, uh, the functionality of my browser. This is given by the buffer extension. So I just remove it because it was added by the buffer extension in Safari. Okay. So now this is the page that we've got and we will, we are going to customize this form because this is the form, the sign in form itself. But before we do that, let's add some functionality in the controller to render this HTML file. So we have an empty controller and I'm going to use this code from the other controller to create this one. So just, you don't need to watch me type so much. Use a controller. I will remove all these things because all we need is just a rendering of the login HTML. Login HTM. All right, so login HTM will be rendered in the user controller and this is called login HTM indeed. So these things should match. If you don't know what how, how the MVC framework works in the in the sample project, I would suggest to look at the previous one of the previous tutorials. I think part three and part four explain it pretty good. But just to keep it short, both controllers extend the main controller, which is this one. This is our application controller. This is the parent class for this project. And we are going to work on this class later on. So you will see anyway what's inside. Okay, so in order to connect the front end with the controller, so the view and the controller, we will have to specify a route. So let me first, okay, so sorry, let me first remove this because this was 
before and it doesn't do anything anymore. So it's going to be a GET, which means that an HTTP GET request is received to login. Then we are going to invoke user controller and the render function or render method in the user controller pass. So if we have done everything right, then the login address, this address should be now working and on our local host, we should be seeing this login page. And this is indeed what's happening. So now we have come to the first major milestone. That means the first milestone in, on, on, on today's path is that we have added the bootstrap login screen and login look and feel to our project. So we have the same thing, you see? If we come to these examples, we got the same result here. Exactly the same wording, exactly the same layout, which is pretty cool. So we added Bootstrap to our project. Well done. Let's see how we should change this and make it work with our own authentication methods. So let's go back to the code and on the login HTML, I would prefer to customize a few things. First of all, remember me is a functionality that I usually don't use because I'm completely fine with the way my browsers work and you know I put my username here, they usually remember me and remember the password. So I never implemented this functionality. I will just remove it so that it won't bother, you see. And of course, if you want to implement something like this, you, you can Google it and <laughs> find maybe another tutorial. Please sign in. I'm absolutely happy with this wording. And instead of username or instead of, sorry, email address, we will use username because this is my preference and uh, this is just a label so I changed the label on this one and um, actually this is not displayed this label is only displayed on screen readers that means that if it's read by a computer then it will say that this is a username field all right we have an input field and on the input field this is this input field here I want to change the placeholder to username username and uh, I don't care if it's one word or two words in our case I will have it as one word and that's it all right and in order to make this work let's let's have a look at the entire structure so buffer pinterest this is the, this class is coming from from the from the plugin so don't care about this this is coming from the browser so the class container is, is a bootstrap container and this is a form this is a sign-in form it's for, it's a, it has a class of form sign-in and this form sign-in class is defined by bootstrap you see and it, it's used in the CSS so this this is the, the stuff that makes it look you know as it looks and um, as we submit this form so we click the submit button that says sign in which is this big thing here, it will pass two input fields. One input field is the username and another input field is the password. So we need to pass and be able to identify and work with these two fields. And in order to make this work, we need to give it another attribute called name because the name attribute is the one that is in fact used on the server side. So username will be the name of this input field and for the password field, we're going to give it the name password. Okay. So when we, when we work with the post variables on the server side, we will be looking for these variables, these names in the post structure. Okay. So if we refresh this, then you see this is a username. There is a password. All right. So as a next step, it's time that we add some authentication functionality to to our project okay so the way we do is do this is that as we push this button sign in then we need to invoke some method to take care of the authentication itself 
and that's therefore we will call this authenticate. So let's come back to our route and define this authenticate. Authenticate will be a post HTTP request because we are going to post the form variables, the form input fields. So it's going to be a post. Let's call it authenticate. And uh, in, it's going to be in the user controller. And we will call this method authenticate. So this is my idea to do this. In order to make this work, we have to change our form. And we have to say that the method of this form is post and the action action specifies the address to be invoked and the action will be authenticate. That means if you push this button, then there will be a post HTTP request sent to authenticate, which is post authenticate will be matched by the user controller authenticate method. So what we need to do now is to go to the user controller, create a new function with the name authenticate and uh, oh, sorry and work out the details in here. And in order to work out the details, we will need to have a user object. So what we're gonna do now? The user enters the username and the password here. Then we need to retrieve the user data from the database and compare the password that was entered here to the password that is stored in the database. So in order to do this, we need to set up a user table. We need to set up a new user and we need to store the password of that user. And we're going to do that by adding some security and we're going to encrypt that password. So we are not going to store the password as is, but we are going to store an encrypted version of that password. Okay, so I think the best next step here would be to create a new table, right? So let's go to our database. You can use PHP MyAdmin or you can use MySQL Workbench or whatever you prefer. Let's create a table called user. Let's call the ID just ID. Let's make it auto increment. Then let's call a field called username. This is going to be the name of the user. This is not going to be here. This is going to be not known. Plus, let's create another field that's called password. And it's going to be not known as well. But for the password, I would prefer to have a slightly longer variable. It's going to be varkar95 because the encrypted password is probably longer than the original password that we provide. So let's apply this. And now we created a new table under our table schema. Please make sure that the schema is selected. Otherwise, you, you will be creating the table in another schema. So this is the user and I will create the user from the database. I don't want to create that from, from the front end. I don't want to build a page for that. So let's create it from here. The username will be F3 user and the password is not going to be the password as is, but we need to have an encrypted version of the password. So in order to do that, I will come back to the command line and start PHP in shell mode. So PHP minus A will start an interactive shell. That means that whatever you type here will be executed, right? You see, echo hello and it says hello. So we are going to use a uh, function called password hash and the password will be F3 password. And the second argument of password hash is the hashing algorithm. And um, I think the best way to do this is to look it up on php.net. There are a couple of different algorithms and I'm going to use the default one. So you can have a look at the documentation of this method here. 
So first argument is the password and the second one is the algorithm. It's a constant and for that constant I will use password default. And I opened it up just to copy and paste it from there. All right, all right. And you see this pretty messy string here is the hashed and coded version of the, this, this string F3 password. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to store this string in the database. Just let me try and copy and paste it again. Okay, now it's okay. So I'm going to store it in the encrypted format. Why is this okay like this and why you should be doing it like this? Because this password hash, there are a lot of hashing algorithms, but password hash is the easiest in PHP. There is a function for that. And this is a one-way encryption. So that means that if somebody gets hold of this string, they wouldn't be able to decode the original password because it only works one way. So if you want to compare the password that the user inputs on the sign-in screen, then we will encode that again. So we will hash that password and compare the two hash strings to each other. If they are identical, then the passwords match. Okay, so now that this is done, we need to provide some way to get hold of this password. And we, we're going to do that with the user class here in the model. So let me just open this up and um, use this so that we don't need to type so much user. So this is going to be the user class in our model. So this is the user model. And it works on top of the user table in the database. Okay, these are standard functions. I don't want to spend time on these, but what I want to do, I want to add a new function. So we say public function and the function will get the user by name because we are entering a username on the screen on the website and therefore we got to be able to receive the user by the name. Okay, so that are this load and within the load brackets here, we will provide an array of conditions. This is just very similar to this one. We will say that name equals question mark and dollar name. All right, this is all we gotta do. And then it's going to retrieve the, the, the given user by a given name from the database. So you will see that I'm not returning the results like this because this form here returns the results. So you can invoke this by making an equal sign to a variable. So you can say that variable equals user get by ID. In this, this case here, what we're going to do, we're going to just invoke the get by ID on a user object and that user object will contain the results and we will work with that like that. So what we're going to do, we go back to our user controller and first of all, we need to find out what the user has posted. So we create a new variable called username and this is the username that, that's coming from, from the login HTM. And that says this F3, F3, and then get. So what we're going to do, get from post. This is, this is the way that we can access the variables in the post method. So this is login HTML and we call this username. So the name is username. So post.username. All right. So this is going to be the username and the password. Dollar password equals this F3 gets and then post password okay so now 
we have both variables from the post method. So the next thing we, we got to do is that we create a new, create a user, which is a new instance of the user model, and we pass the db as a, as a parameter, as an argument. And you remember this is the way that we construct the new instance of the model. So we have, we have done this before. And on that user, we just say get by name, get by name. And I'm just going over the double check that it has exactly the same name. Okay, get by name. And then we copy and paste this name. Okay, so that means that that we actually we have we are running a query against the database to find the user with this name okay so now the contents of this instance of the user object should be the record that we, that is you know related to the specific user so now we need to check if that user exists and that is user dry there is a method of the sql mapper in f3 so if you go that you see this is an instant of the db sql mapper class so this extends that class and therefore it has a method called dry and dry means that it checks if the mapper is empty so if user is dry that means there are no records in there so in that case we can just simply echo user does not exist and it's important to tell you however that it's not a good practice to tell exactly what's going on in, in when it when it comes to security so the less information you provide about an error uh, then you know you, you will be more protected from hackers and any hostile uh, visitors. So we are not going to keep this. We are just going to use this for debugging purposes. All right. So I think it's time that we test it. And what we should be seeing, I will provide a username that doesn't exist in the database. And um, if it doesn't exist in the database, then we should see this message. Okay, so username and we code our user F3 user. Okay, so I will put something else here. I will just put user. Say so sign in and uh, it's not working. So let's, let's go back and see what happened. Okay, so what happened? Action authenticate, it's fine. I, I believe this should be okay. And um, I think this method should be invoked, but we can also double check if that method was invoked. But let me try this again. Ah, fantastic. So I just, okay, I know what's going on. I made a mistake here because I put name instead of username. And if you remember, we call this column username, so that should be username. And first, why it wasn't invoked, I don't know why it wasn't invoked the first time, first place. I just saved it and then it was working again. Okay, fine. So here we go. I click the button again and it says user doesn't exist. So if I come back here and I say F3 user, sign in, then we don't, ex you know, there is nothing here because we have nothing for that, that part here. So let's do something about this. So the next thing we have to do is we have to compare the two passwords. And that works in a way that we have another function called password verify. And the first argument of that password verify, the first argument is the password from the user. And the second argument is the password that is stored in the database. So that's user pass, sorry, password. Okay, so that means that if these two match, 
then it will return true otherwise it will return false and then we're going to echo passwords okay and then else let's echo something else echo password ko or let's go not okay <laughs> all right so let's try this again the password is f3 password and if i go sign in password is okay you see it's working and if i say just aaa sign in password not okay hmm? okay so now the logic is there but instead of this logic we should do something more meaningful so in this case when stuff is not okay i just want to redirect uh, to the login page and that's gonna be done with fat freeze redirect methods so let's go to fretfreeframework.com user guide routing engine and the method is called reroutes so you can have a look at it here very simply you just go f3 reroute and then you provide the route and then you should be fine so what we're going to do this f3 reroutes and the route that we go do is slash login because here we have slash login okay i'm also double checking so to make sure that it is the same thing so we are going to be rerouted to the login page so let's see it again okay so i say like this user doesn't exist and we are redirected to the login page but if you go with f3 user and f3 password then we are not redirected because this is okay all right so what we want to do if everything is okay i think we want to show our main page that we had before so if i just let's use this you see this is hello from db you remember this is where we started this used to be the root address of our website and it still is so if everything is fine we let the user go to the root address otherwise we will come back and reroute the user to the login page so what we need to do now all you need all we need to do is to make sure that users that are not logged in they cannot access this page because this is also part of security and how are we going to do that we're going to add some information to the session when the user successfully logs in so before this reroute here we're going to add a variable to the session and then we're going to check before every routing action we're going to check that variable if it exists in the session or not and if it does exist it's okay if it doesn't exist then we will again reroute the user to the login page so this is going to be probably the final milestone and in order to achieve this we have to do something here with the session and this is again fat free specific fat free has a functionality to create a new session and um, and then put session variables into that session so this is what we're going to use we have options to store that in a cache store that in a db we can also go for mongo and so on but we are going for the more simple solution and we are just going to use the cache so first of all before we go to this code here we have to have a look at this one we have to have cache enabled so that means that cache should be true okay so how does it work we go to our config ini here and then we say cache equals true I mean true <laughs> okay so there we go I think why not have it all caps I don't wanna 
jeopardizes success. Okay, let's not play with it. Okay, let's leave it like this and see if it needs to be all caps or it's okay to have it lowercase. Okay, so the first thing about the session is that we need to start a session when there is a request. And that means that the best way to do it is our index.htm. So this we haven't touched this file for a while. But now we are going to add one line here. We start the session here. And uh, caching is also is going to be a cache session. And uh, here we just need to add a variable to that session. So we're just going to set a variable. And of course we need to change this to this. This F3 set session. And it's going to be user. And it's going to be dollar user username. So this is the name of the database user. And yeah, this is username. I already made this mistake, so I don't want to risk it again. OK, so now I have added this user to the session. And the next thing we got to do is that we got to go to our controller that is the parent class. And in the parent class, we have to override the before route function or not override, sorry, we just have to implement the, over, uh, the before route function. So the before route function runs before every routing action. So before any of these is invoked, during that process, this event is fired. I consider this to be an event. And before the routing, whatever is here, it's going to be run, executed, and invoked. So we got to check this if. So there's an if statement. And we need to see if this get, sorry, this F3, of course, F3 get. And then we go session dot user, not username, user, because we added the user. Let's check back. Yeah, session dot user. So session dot user, and we need to see if this thing is null or not. If it's null, that means that we are not logged in. And that means that we have to reroute to the login page. OK, plus we need to make sure that the execution won't go on. Because otherwise, you know, if, if we don't exit at this stage, then it would anyway invoke the next steps and do the routing. And we don't want that. So. This will happen in every case, which means that it would also happen if this login happens. And we don't want that because we want to be able to display the login page even if the user is not logged in. So the right way to do this is that we take this function from the controller class and we will override that function in this class. Just very simply override it and leave it empty. And that should be enough to make this happen. All right, so that means that I have to log off from here. And I believe that my sessions end when I close the browser. So I close that browser. I open this up again, and then we go localhost. Okay, and now we are not logged in, hopefully. And that means that if I go, okay, so if I go localhost and the root address, then I'm automatically redirected to the login page. You see, it's already happening. So this is the proof. It's already happening. This is the intended behavior. And now we are going to log in. So F3 user, F3 password, sign in. And then we go hello from DB. And from now on, if, if I go to the same address, 
Since my session is active, I will be able to access this page. Okay, so I think we are done. <laughs> uh, let me just have a look, but I think I think it's complete, and I don't want to add any more information to this tutorial. Uh, we have set up a login screen based on a bootstrap sample, and we have created a security system where the pages are only available to people who are logged in. Hmm? Okay, so I think this is this is useful for you if you want to learn fat free or even useful if you just want to learn some basic example about a login page and bootstrap with PHP. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. See you in the next tutorial.